climbers need to use lots of gear and rock protection, carabiners and ropes are among the most important. The kern mantle rope is the vital link between the lead climber and the bee layer. This dynamic inner core, or kern, contains twisted strands that provide most of the strength and shock absorption in the event of a fall. The primary job of the sheath, or mantle, is to protect that core from dirt and abrasion. But not all climbing ropes are the same. A so-called single rope like this one can be used on its own for routes on indoor walls, outdoor crags and easy angled alpine ascents. There are alternatives to using one single rope. These include two half ropes and so-called twin ropes. But unless your first climb is going to be a long and meandering rock route or a punishing ice climb, a single rope should suffice. Now this single 50 meter rope has a diameter of 10.5 millimeters. It's shorter and heavier but more durable than a 60 meter rope with a diameter of just 9.2 millimeters. Static ropes have no shock absorbing qualities. This makes them ideal for abseiling, but they should never be used for climbing. Coiling is a tidy way to carry and store your rope, but a dedicated rope bag has the added benefit of providing a platform for keeping your ropes and your climbing gear free of sand and grit. The rope you choose will depend on the sort of climbing you want to do, how much weight you're prepared to carry and how much money you want to spend. One more thing, ropes lose some of their strength and gain weight when wet, which is why some ropes have dry treatments applied to them. Being connected to your climbing partner with a rope is one thing, but connecting that rope to the rock face is another matter. On some rock climbs, especially in Europe, it's common to clip your rope to a metal hanger, which is usually called a bolt. Climbing on bolts is called sport climbing. On many British crags, you need to place your own removable protection into cracks. This is called traditional or trad climbing. I've racked a variety of new protection on my harness. Generally speaking, protection is either passive, like these colour-coded hexes and nuts, or active, like these camming devices. Cams are armed with triggers, which allows them to be placed inside cracks. There are lots of different ways to rack your gear. I've got my protection racked across several carabiners, or crabs, on one side of my harness and I've grouped them according to size. It's essential to be taught by a qualified instructor or an experienced climber how to place protection so that it doesn't simply drop out of the rock or fail when fallen on, with potentially serious or even fatal consequences. One of the best places to learn new climbing skills is Plassey Brennan, the National Centre for Mountain Activities. Situated in Snowdonia National Park, it's just a stone's throw from two of Cotswold's stores. Of course, you just can't thread your rope through a cam or a hex or a bolt. After all, you're tied to the rope. So you're going to need some quick draws. The Snaplink carabiner with the silver finish or straight gate goes into the protection or bolt, whilst the coloured crab or curved gate is clipped onto the rope. The extender minimises annoying rope drag and also reduces the chance of the rope tugging the piece of protection out of position whilst you're climbing. As with placing protection, you'll need to learn the correct way to clip quick draws. I keep quick draws racked on the opposite side of the harness to my protection, and I stow prussic loops and a nut key towards the back. When you combine your rack with your climbing partners to create a larger arsenal, it's easy to lose track of what items belong to you. Marian's added tabs of colourful tape to his metal gear so he can easily identify his hardware. In the event of a slip, the lead climber depends upon his or her climbing partner to prevent the rope being fed out and to arrest the fall. Of course, the other climber can't just grab hold of the rope with their hands. Instead, the rope is passed through a belay device, allowing the alert belayer to quickly and safely stop the rope. Unlike a snap link carabiner used in a quick draw, a belay device is attached to the harness with a large HMS screw gate carabiner for extra security. You'll need to carry several different size screw gate carabiners and sewn slings to help set up rock anchors when it's time to bring up your climbing partner. Owning the correct gear is only a small part of becoming a safe climber, but hopefully we've given you the big picture regarding some of the items you'll need to equip yourself with. All climbing equipment sold by Cotswold meets mandatory safety standards. 
It's the individual climber's responsibility to properly care for and regularly inspect his or her climbing equipment. Manufacturers issue care guidelines with their products.